welcome to a special episode of the Red Hawk Roundup. I am Mason Smith here today with our special guest, Sean McDonald, who is the volleyball coach for Frontier. And we're going to be having an interview with him today after his announcement of moving on from girls volleyball. Maybe not boys volleyball. We'll be talking about that too. All right, so thank you for joining us today. Well, it's nice Sean. to be here with you. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, of course. So you are not going to be the girls' volleyball coach next year, correct? That's correct. All right. But boys' volleyball, we were talking about it before we started rolling. That is kind of up in the air right now? I'm going to be there this spring for sure. Yeah. And, you know, possibly moving forward. Um, you know, I feel like the girls' volleyball team is in a really good place right now, and I want to make sure mm -hmm. that the – the boys team is a real self-sustaining entity before before I go because you know it's like I was saying there's there's been a lot of or too many uh, you know schools that have a boys volleyball team for mm -hmm. three or four years and after the newness wears off of uh, kind of fades out so we want to make sure that doesn't happen at Frontier and so I'm going to stick around to make sure that happens and yeah um, you know work with Courtney in the spring and she does a great job. Yeah. All right. And uh, Courtney, she's going to be taking over the head coach position for girls volleyball. Is I, that correct? Or? I'm not. I'm not sure if that, that's 100 percent yet okay. or not. I I don't want to. <clears throat> um, I, I think she would be the perfect choice. I think she's the obvious choice. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if uh, any decisions have been made or publicized on that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard anything about it, so that's why I was wondering. And so. You said girls volleyball is in a good place, and I think that's a little bit of an understatement, maybe. So, how many yeah. Western Mass championships have you led them to? Eighteen. Eighteen, yeah. and is that like in a row? It's eighteen or? in a row. Eighteen yeah. in a row. So that's pretty historic, yeah. is my understanding of that. And you've been coaching them for how many years? Uh, this was season twenty-one in the fall. So oh. I started in two thousand three, and yeah, I've um, yeah, been been going since then yeah well you've been coaching longer than i've been alive so <laughs> thanks for making me feel old bud appreciate it <laughs> well how exactly did you get into coaching volleyball coaching I, I i got into more um playing first okay and so one of those teams that had a team and then didn't have a team was mahar and that was where i went to school oh, and graduated from and so i got in my senior year i played on a a really bad boys volleyball team, mm. but kind of fell in love with the game and, yeah. and then, uh, you know, got playing it more and then got into officiating. Then the coaching was actually the last thing. And so I still coach and officiate, but yeah. coaching was one of the last things I did in the volleyball, you know, mm -hmm. progression of things between player and then official and then coach. Yeah. And so um, in terms of coaching, was there anyone that really kind of inspired you to start doing that, do you think? Um, you know, there's, I've taken a lot of things from a lot of different people. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was more, um, you know, necessity. It was, uh, we need, you know, we need some help in this club, this kind of this off season club, um, okay. you know, that I was working with for yeah. a while and then I started my own club. Hmm. Uh, but, um, you know, there's just, there's, there's just a shortage of coaches, a shortage of officials, yeah. um, people that, you know, that can teach things. I mean, you know, that kind of have an idea of the game that can share it. So yeah. there's no shortage of finding somebody to be there, but someone that can teach is a little different. Yeah. And so you've been coaching at Frontier for 21 years, yeah. but you've been coaching elsewhere for longer? I coached uh, yeah, in, the, in the club. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, you know, for a few years before that. Okay. And, you know, and then just kind of informally taught some of my friends to play, yeah. you know, that so we could get some better pickup volleyball <laughs> going. <laughs> yeah. And so I've, one of my other questions is yeah. going to be, were you involved in volleyball at all before coaching? You've kind of already. Yeah. Like I you know, started as a player. Yeah. Um, you know, at that time, boys volleyball was in the fall. Um, yeah. At the same time, the girls team was. So, hmm. you know, we were kind of sharing coaches, sharing um, uh, playing space, practice yeah. time. You know, at that time, the Mahar girls were having one of the best teams ever. So we weren't getting a lot of attention over here nor did you know we would scrimmage the girls and they would just beat us into the ground oh, and um but you know it's like i just think volleyball is one of those sports that's just really easy to tell that you're not good at it yet you know that it's just hard you got to keep it in the air yeah um so you know but kind of got the bug from that yeah yeah and so it might be an obvious answer to this but why did 
why was there that change uh, for boys volleyball to go to the spring instead of the fall? I, I think it, um, it matched a little more with the college seasons. Okay, so college okay. volleyball, men's volleyball is, is going on now. Um, and it will go into May. Um, mm -hmm. But it also gives a chance for, like I said, you know, there's a, there's a shortage of uh, people that can teach skill. And so that allows somebody like me, I coach in the fall yeah. and then I coach in the spring. And so you get to use, yeah. you know, um, you know, you get to use the same equipment. You get to use the, the court. You get to use the coaches. Of course. You yeah. get, um, so I think that was one of the things. But, you know, right now, boys volleyball is a mess all over the country. Some are playing in the fall, some yeah. are playing in the spring. Oh, wow. Um, trying to get it all into, into, you know, one thing kind of yeah. homogenize it, but it's, it's yeah. taken a long time. And so you said a couple of times that there isn't a lot of, uh, teachers for, uh, volleyball out there. Is, do you think that's one of the reasons why it, it's, everything's so disconnected? That's why there isn't a lot of. Teachers? No, I, I think, you know, in some of the, you know, some of the States, um, you know, there's, there's always, um, other people's personal interests involved in one of the one sure. of the reasons um you know there was hesitancy to start a boys volleyball team here was mm -hmm. it was fear that you know we might cut into the baseball team too much or we might cut into the track team too much so if you're if you're an ad and you're a baseball coach you want boys volleyball in the fall you don't yeah. want it in the spring mm -hmm. okay so there's there's some of that going around the, in the country yeah uh, but um you know i think we've been in we've been able to peacefully coexist you know with baseball and yeah. and uh track you know and we're, we're really trying to get some of the kids that you know are home playing video games instead of yeah know, let's of come course. out and do something you know irl in real mm -hmm. life here and and get out and and you know play a real sport instead of sit home so though we're kind of targeting some of those people that really aren't doing yeah. anything yeah so. and we've had a couple um players for specifically for boys volleyball who used to play other sports kind of going back and forth the first name that comes to mind is owen babb yeah i think he uh played for you guys last year but mm -hmm. I, i've heard that he's going back to baseball i've heard that i haven't talked to him you yeah know, i'd like to talk to him of course <laughs> but uh yeah i mean um yeah he did a great job with oh, us yeah. you know for for you know really playing volleyball for really two and a half three months mm -hmm. um, like i said it just it takes a long time yeah uh, to really to really learn it so um you know really towards the end of the season he was really starting to you know like wow this this guy could you know really excel at this you know he's got the body for it he's of got the, the brains for it he's you know he's a great teammate and great kid and yeah um so yeah i've heard a little of that through the grapevine i haven't talked yeah. to owen but yeah um so well on both front i'll start with the girls volleyball um because you've been coaching that for longer it's been around for longer how do you think you were able to create such a successful dynasty pretty much and win 18 straight western mass titles i think with anything that's either really good or really bad that it's a combination of things that, that yeah happen, you know like you know, you look at the Titanic sunk because five different things all lined up into, sure. you know, yeah. you take one, any one of them away. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, you know, Frontier had a pretty good volleyball team before I got here. Yeah. And um, we, we you know, built on it. So I didn't have to build from scratch like we're doing with the boys right now. Yeah. So, but I think, um, you know, between, uh, I, I think one of the things that we do well is, um, you know, the, the things that we train and the things that we, um, you know, consider more important than maybe some other things that yeah. we do in volleyball. And, um, so that, you know, our, what we train and how we train it, I think are probably more important than who we train. Okay. So we've got great kids, but there's, sure. you know, other schools got great kids too. Yeah. Okay. And so I think that, um, you know, getting everybody on the same page from, you know the varsity team jv team and now we have a middle school team okay yeah. so when i first got here we didn't have a middle school team and it was if you're mm -hmm. in seventh grade and you're trying to beat somebody out of a spot on the jv team yeah. you know that's hard so we wanted to get some place where you could be brand new and that's okay yeah um so you know with the fact that we have seven through 12 in the school and we basically get to run our own feeder program mm -hmm. in the middle school that's a big help yeah um, but i think you know we've had great um We've had great coaches along the lines, uh, you know, from, you know, Jack Stankowski was one that was my JB coach for 13 years. And, you know, he yeah. did a great job preparing the JB team to come play for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
But uh, and then Courtney and Angelica, you know, back after they graduated school and, you know, who played for us and now we're back. I'm really proud of that. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, you know, I think it's a combination of things. I think it's, you know, what we train, how we train, you know, the culture we build about, you know, mistakes are, mistakes are going to happen. And it's yeah. not only do they happen, they're kind of crucial for your learning process. So uh, we try to make an environment where, you know, go ahead and make your mistakes. You know, we're yeah. make, and don't feel special about that one because you're going to make thousands more. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, but I think you know, with anything, it was you know, it's kind of a soup that there's a lot of different ingredients in it. You know, certainly not just me, and not just of one course. or two special players. Yeah. You know, we, there's there's teams out there with one or two really good people mm -hmm. um, that haven't you know haven't done exactly what we've done. So yeah, um, that's what I think. Yeah. Combination of things: really good coaches, really good players kids that want kids that fall in love with the game and then want to play it more. so there's a lot of kids playing yeah. off season not because they're being forced to because they love it mm -hmm. you know yeah so yeah that definitely can make a big difference and i i know you've been stressing uh, that it's a big combination of things to make a team successful but in volleyball and also like in general what do you think if you had to choose one would be the most important thing that a team needs to succeed I, I I think being a good teammate is probably, you know, if we can get 12 people to all be good teammates with each other, yeah. you know, I think that's a, a huge thing. But I, mm -hmm. I still go back to my part two of the answer. Um, you know, it was really like what we focus on training and how that yeah. – um, you know, we take all these stats. I don't know if you've seen the movie Moneyball, but like <laughs> yeah. they take all these stats, right? And they're like, yeah. man, we take all these stats and um, – are there any stats in volleyball that if we could get better at, it would translate into winning the game? Yeah. Okay. And so there are, and, um, you know, we focus on those a mm -hmm. lot and we, and, you know, for me, it, it, volleyball is really just one big math problem. I've got to score 25 points before and before you do, and I had to yeah. hold you to 23 or less cause I got to win by two. Yeah. Okay. So I only had to win 25 out of 48 rallies. So mm -hmm. that's like a 52 percent so yeah. if you tell the girls and the, most of them are on the honor roll it's like you only have to get a 52 to pass this test yeah okay that's so a good way to put it um so i think you know it, it's it's all about you know error management you know if every error that i don't make makes you get a kill yeah uh, so it, it's sort of if we can put the pressure on the other team to one we want the other team to do something really spectacular to beat us so yeah but i think you know the culture and the team and you know the hard work i think those are the things and you know that's that means so much more than if you're six foot two or if you're <laughs> yeah whatever i think you know we've we've done a lot of good with the girls team when i don't think we've had anyone over six foot you know since i've been here yeah so we had people we listed at six feet but like mm -hmm. little spin. <laughs> <laughs> now i mean we've mentioned you've done this for a very long time you've been involved in volleyball for a very long time thanks for making me feel old <laughs> <laughs> i'll try my best to stop doing that. that's all right bye. but why do you think why did you feel that now was the right time to move on from doing that for the girls specifically yeah you know i i when i first came here in 2003 it was kind of talked into by a few girls that was co playing in that off-season club that went to mm -hmm. frontier and like we you know our, both our coaches left and and we need a coach and yeah. i was like i don't know and i said well i'll do it for a year or two you know and, and that was 21 seasons ago so yeah. i really fell in love with it and really i'm really proud of what we've built here of course um you know it's just you know at, at some point I, you know i feel like I've done pretty much all that I can do here, and then it's time yeah. for someone else to take over and do it. And sure. and I've always said I, I I love what I do, and I love the people that I do it with, and those things haven't changed. Okay, yeah. like love the team. Um, even the parents have been great. You know, like it's uh, you know that's that's kind of a harder thing to do sometimes. Sure. Is um, but you know everybody's the joke is everybody's dream job is a coach at an orphanage, right? so. <laughs> Uh, but it hasn't been that case here. We've had a lot yeah. of uh, parent support in our fundraising and concessions and things like that. But um, you know, part of part of um, you know my decision to leave is who I would be leaving it to, and, yeah. um, because you know you you see sometimes they you know a, a team will have really good run 
and they change coaches and then it immediately stops. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I know that, you know, if, if they pick Courtney, that she's going to be able to continue the success we had and build on it. Okay. So yeah. the succession plan for me was important. And, of course. You know, Courtney now, you know, working at Frontier in the building and just has to walk down the hall to go to practice. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that was a big part of it. But it also yeah. felt like it was time. You know, it felt like, um, you know, we've we built the thing. Um, we, we've won at the highest level that we can that we can win and we've done it a few times and yeah um so i felt like you know just for me to do some other things in life was kind of that that next step yeah of course do you think that in the near future i mean besides coaching the boys team you're going to be still involved in the girls volleyball at the school at all at the school i i yeah i i think i want to uh you know i've said i want to let courtney be courtney of okay. course, and I don't want to be the big shadow, such a foot six shadow, um, you know, behind her. I want to kind of let her do her thing without me being around, hovering around. Yeah, you know. So I want to, I want to go to some of the big games, and I want to go to senior night. Of and, course, um, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to crowd her too much. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm involved in volleyball year round between, yeah. you know, Frontier and I, and I coach um, and direct Pioneer Valley Juniors Club, you know, where I came from practice mm -hmm. this morning. And, you know, we're going to Boston for a three-day tournament this weekend. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm still being involved in coaching girls. It just won't yeah. be a, you know, 100% group of frontier girls. Um, you know, and like I said, I'll be with the boys. And I'll be officiating volleyball. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still going to be, if there's a volleyball net around, there's a good chance you might see Sean nearby. Yeah. So um, I'm still going to be very involved in, in volleyball. That's good, yeah. And so we've been talking about the girls a little bit for a little while. So turning it back around to the boys, you're going to be coaching them yep. uh, in a month or so, I think is when we're starting. Yeah, Less than a about, month. yeah about three weeks. Three weeks. And oh. So what hopes do you have? I mean, you guys have been uh, fairly successful. Uh, it's been two years now that they've been running it, right? Mm -hmm. And so your third year, uh, third year of Frontier having a boys volleyball team. Yep. What are your hopes for, you know, expanding that, I guess? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there, there's some myths out there about, mm -hmm. you know, that volleyball is just a girl sport, okay, and that uh, it's just not. And, yeah. you know, that men's volleyball around the world is second only to soccer around the world. Really? You know, yeah. It's like crazy. Wow. Like there's there's – Places you wouldn't think, okay? So even Brazil, Brazil is soccer crazy. Yeah. Right? They are insane about volleyball. Really? Yeah. They're like volleyball, what did, what did they say? Volleyball, I can't remember the thing, but it was like basically only second to soccer because soccer is considered religion. Yeah. Okay? And like, but they're and extremely good. Yeah. Extremely good. Wow. Um. So yeah, I think we're we're fighting this myth that it's you know boys are playing a girls' sport, which is not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and you know it's it, it's it's been a little frustrating because we we had some young kids, they starting to get better, and then a bunch of them you know didn't come back the next year, mm -hmm. and so yeah. we're trying to get um, we're trying to get a younger group you know, that we can train for three, four, five years. Like we said with the girls, we get to run our own feeder program. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's just, you know, some of it's frustrating. Like I said, it's, you know, when you have to try to keep the ball in the air in a three dimensional yeah. way, it's, it's, it's tough. I can't hold the ball. I can't dribble the ball say, Hey, set a pick right there. And I'm going to run. Yeah. It's like, you're basically, you know, volleyball is kind of like basketball with a four second shot clock. You know, I've got four seconds to run my offense. Yeah. And then I have to, I have to go on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it can be really fast, it can be really powerful with men, with yeah. uh, boys and men, you know, jumping really high. You know, it's um, it's really the same game, but it's it's played, you know, we stress other things. In, okay. You know, like we would stress, you know, in girls volleyball, a lot more floor defense and in boys volleyball, we might stress more blocking at the net, uh, okay. things like that. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, what are we hoping for? Um, yeah, it's our third year. You know, uh, we were really proud that we were able to win Western Mass in our first two years in a row. Yeah. Um, 
you know, to be a brand new team in, in, oh, yeah. in Western Mass. So totally. uh, really proud of that. Um, you know, we'd like to see how that goes uh, this year. We've got, um, because we were brand new, we weren't in a league. Oh, really? Boys. Well, yeah, we had to find wow. a whole schedule, <laughs> you know, and, and Carl did a great job. Uh, Carl Sear did a great mm -hmm. job uh, getting, you know, our whole schedule set up. So now we are in a league and it's going to be a lot tougher. You know, so we're going to be playing some people that have been, uh, you know, well established. We're going to be mm -hmm. playing the state champs. We're oh, going to be man. playing the state champ runner up. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, we're in the deep end of the pool now and um, it's good for us um, to know what that's what it looks like. You know, that's what we want to be in a few years. Yeah. Um, but we're still definitely, um, you know, trying to be patient and, and sure. you know, just make sure we're moving up. In, yeah and in the right direction yeah so so it sounds like you guys are going to have some pretty good teams to test you this season yes yeah 100 percent. that's good thing it's good less, yeah yeah i mean you know um you know our girls and boys programs are really not in the same place uh, yeah yet and sure. you know we'd like to get the boys closer to what the girls are when you know, compete with just about anybody in the state absolutely um you know with that takes more than two years yeah <laughs> so with boys so do you think you're going to be around to try and see that happen for the boys? We'll see. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, who, who knows what, you know, I, I don't have any plans to leave, you know, if yeah. the right college volleyball came, job came up and it was a full-time thing. Of um, course. That, that might change, you know, what I do in the spring. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. But, but yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I've, pretty much got the general idea that you feel good about it, but how do you feel about uh, the future of volleyball at Frontier? I think it's really bright. Yeah. You know, I, um, I think the, the girls volleyball team is in a great place right now. And I think Absolutely. that, um, you know, Courtney's got a lot of co people coming back. If Courtney's the coach, mm -hmm. hopefully they'll make the right decisions on that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if, um, you know, she's got a lot of seniors coming back that are, they're going to be really strong. So she's going to be in a good position to be successful mm -hmm. uh, next year, you know, and, and we're just trying to keep moving the boys in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so Frontier Volleyball is really bright. Yeah. Um, you know, and then just volleyball in general um, is growing just crazy. You know, like yeah. there's more high school girls playing volleyball in the United States than are playing basketball in the United States. Really? You wouldn't think so, right? And so um, I'm going to Boston this this weekend. Yeah. They've got the convention center and they're going to have 95 volleyball courts set up in there. 95. 95. That's incredible. And that's, you play, they're going to basically use those 95 twice. Group of teams come in in the morning, they all leave, another group comes in. And then another 95 courts full of people. That's insane. For three days yeah wow. it's in, it it's huge okay just it's just people don't get how big it is and yeah. then it's growing so fast that you know, we're running out of coaches and officials and and mm. yeah you know so we got to stop yelling at volleyball officials okay <laughs> so we need some more of them yeah um but yeah like even they had um you know wisconsin and nebraska they're two of the top team women's teams in yeah. the united states mm -hmm. they played a regular season game that game on TV beat the Major League Baseball playoff game that was on TV as far as the ratings, and it beat two college football games that were on TV at the same time. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's getting big. Wow. So, and boys volleyball is the fastest growing sport in North America. Yeah. So, and it's really cool, kind of cool because the you never see the women's side of a sport drive the growth of the men's side. That's it's true. always yeah. like there's an NBA and then there's a, win, a WNBA yeah. or there's, you know, PGA and then LPGA. Yeah. You know, and now it's like the growth and popularity of girls volleyball is driving the growth and popularity of boys volleyball. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That is really. And so now last question that I have for you, million dollar question yep. is volleyball your favorite sport? Um, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love it. I mean, I used yeah. to play it a lot. I haven't played it much lately. Um, you know, it's just one of those sports that you have to have help on your team. You know, you can't, mm -hmm. can't go down, rebound a ball, dribble it all the way down and dunk it. And yeah. then I always need the help of some other player, at least one other player to, to make three contacts. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I think it's, you know, maybe with the exception of football, the one you have to act as a team the most. And, yeah. you know, that's cool. Okay, that, that's really, I think, part of what just makes it awesome. And it's just, you know, a really cool culture, whether it's, you know, uh, girls volleyball or boys volleyball, yeah. that it's, um, you know, you got to be supportive of your teammates because you need them. Yeah, okay. it's crazy. You, good can't just, you can't just do it on your own. Yeah. Um, but it is my favorite sport. It's the one I played the most. It's the one I know the most about. I would not try to pretend to coach, you know, basketball or sure. soccer or anything like that. Yeah. So I'm a one trick pony and this is what I know. Mm -hmm. and, and I know a fair amount of it. Yeah. So, but it is my favorite, you know, for the, some of those reasons that it's fast. Absolutely. Um, you know, after whether you win or lose a point, you get about 10 seconds to regroup and there's another mm -hmm. rally happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's cool. Man. That's all I've got for you today. Right. Thank, thank you so much for, well, thank you for down. having me yeah. and, uh, you know, putting volleyball in the spotlight for a minute. Oh yeah. And we're going to be there. If Gat's going to be there covering Great. a lot of boys volleyball games uh, this spring, you guys should tune in. It's going to be really exciting. He's going to be out there and be there leading them to victory, hopefully. So once again, thank you so much for coming in Shannon. and we'll see you guys in the next episode where we're going to be recapping winter sports and doing a look forward on spring sports, boys volleyball, baseball, softball, a bunch of other stuff. So be sure to tune in for that. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You've been watching the Red Hawk Roundup.